Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from in the world. Welcome to Open Up, our live talk show. I'm RJ Horner, and I'm the host of Open Up and the Vice President for Voice of Men 360. Voice of Men 360 is a not-for-profit organization founded in 2020 based in Toronto, Canada. Um, Voice of Men 360 was born out of seeing a tremendous need in stepping up to, to help support men um, in overcoming their, their life challenges. We're part of International Men's Day. International Men's Day has been serving for over 21 years so far and is now represented in 90 countries around the world who joined together doing various activities. International Men's Day follows six pillars which represent the overall well-being of men and boys and we follow in those same footsteps. So why is Open Up so important? Because men and boys are not willing to open up our hearts and share our matters with people. When we keep those within ourselves, they create emotional challenges which can create ill health effects. And we want to help alleviate that. That's why we want to create an open space and allow individuals to share their life journey through our platform. We aim to create awareness about life challenges, struggles, and the overcomes that boys and men have to go through in their lives. Um, there are no limitations with gender, age, nationality, ethnic groups with sharing your life journey. We want everybody to participate in our program. Our goal is to make a positive impact on someone's life through this program. Open Up is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We bring individuals to each show and let them share their life experiences with you. So we want to remind you that Voice of Men 360's mission is always delivered with good faith towards peaceful harmony. The views and opinions expressed in today's episode are those of our speakers and do not necessarily represent Voice of Men 360. Organization engages in discussion forums to offer inspiration and create awareness to the issues of men who wish to overcome their life challenges. We're not providing medical or therapeutic advice. Should you require that type of assistance, we want you to contact your medical professional immediately. If you have any questions or concerns about today's episode or any Voice of Men 360 content, please email us, info at voiceofmen360.org. My guest today is Muhammad Ali Taib. Um, he is Malaysian born um, and he has a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and Counseling. He works at the headquarters of Sarawak Welfare Department. Um, he has an HOD for Rehabilitation and Legal Welfare Department. And he's a director for Women Department Development and a special officer to the Minister of Women and Development Department. Deputy Director to Children Children Welfare um, Department, <clears throat> and he's an advisor at International Men's Day. He's been sharing his experiences on a few IMD Malaysia shows, and he hosts panel discussions as well. Please welcome Muhammad Ali Taib to open up. Thank you for joining us and being willing to share your life journey with us. Shall I call you RJ? Oh, hi. Yes. Absolutely. That's please do. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, hi to everyone. I am Muhammad Ali Taib. I am from uh, the land of Borneo, Sarawak. And now I am in Sarawak itself. Uh, after uh, quite some times I was in uh, Semenanjung, Malaysia, which is in the peninsula Malaysia. And I am happy uh, to be here today to share uh, my experience uh, on perhaps anything about uh, the man issue uh, especially uh -huh. i think that's absolutely. it about me <laughs> absolutely and i wanted to do this and the first thing i noticed about you is your name let because we're going to go back early so how did you get your name being malaysia i know you guys are boxing fans right is that where you get your yes. name <laughs> you're named after the great one <clears throat> yes uh behind me is actually my late father and mother uh, pictures uh, yes, I was named after Muhammad Ali, the boxers, uh, and uh, I am pretty sure uh, during that particular year when I was born, uh, that particular name is very famous. And uh, till now, uh, every time I introduce myself, Muhammad Ali, they will de definitely mention me, the, 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 the boxer one. <laughs> for, for sure, for sure. I, I, I guess it's got to come up. But like I said, it still amuses you to this day. Um, that's something that's very, very you know, enjoyable, something that you can live off of for sure. Yes, um, definitely. So you seem to, again, your, your name based on your parents, you know, 
it seems there's a love there. There's joy there. Did you have a good family growing up? Tell me a little bit about that, if you wouldn't mind. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, I am very close to my late father and my late mother. Uh, both of them have passed away almost 10 years already. Uh, and then uh, my relationship with uh, them, uh, very close, and then uh, was close. And then uh, to my siblings, I have, uh, there are five of us. I am number four. Uh, so, uh, I have two sisters and three brothers, uh -huh. and all of us actually uh, still uh, keep on updating each other, even though nowadays it seems that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is spreading all around the world, and we uh, cannot meet and greet every day to each other, but we manage to contact each other through uh, this particular platform and so on, mm -hmm. oh, especially absolutely. online. Absolutely. Family is important. Um, it's important that we keep in touch. We keep that connection. Um, um, absolutely amazing that you're able to do so in these times. Yes. So tell me a bit about your your influence from your father. Uh, you, again, only lost him 10 years ago, so you must have had him through your, your upbringing into your youth. Um, tell me about your father's influence at that time, if you wouldn't mind. Definitely. Actually, my father, the policeman, uh, mm. and uh, actually... <coughs> one of uh, my early ambition is actually want to become a policeman as well. Uh, but uh, towards the end, I'm becoming the social welfare officer, uh, which related to all the uh, legal and also uh, helping people. And at the same time, uh, my mother, uh, she likes to cook very much. So I inherit uh, her hobby as mine as well. Uh, and normally uh, having uh, dinner and having our brunch is a must in our in my family actually uh -huh. so uh, for so many years uh, during my when i joined social welfare department i used to share a lot of uh, my work experience especially in terms of dealing with the domestic violent cases uh, child abuse and then uh, dealing with destitute people, uh, most of the time, I would definitely refer to my father. And that's why, uh, actually, I got good advice and good ideas uh, in terms of trying to solve the problem or the issues uh, from uh, at the beginning of my career itself. Uh, and therefore, I think, uh, well, my father do... Uh, brought me up uh, and then uh, have a great influence and inspiration in my life itself uh -huh. because at the same time uh, he like they like to help people uh, and then that is why uh, when i work at the welfare department we it is actually uh, helping those who in need is actually uh, our 360s in daily life uh actually uh -huh. absolutely i love this you obviously had great influence on you with your father and your career um uh, but i love that you say you had brunch every morning that was part of your family um tradition um obviously there's got to be a lot of conversations about you know at least guided with family values um you know direction of life that sort of thing so you must have had early guidance um to keep it going at this you know elderly or in your maturity age, you know what I mean? Yes, uh, I have to agree with you. And then uh, actually, uh, it seems that uh, my decision and then uh, what I share with my own family later on is actually uh, based on what I've been uh, brought up by my family, uh, which is uh, if we have any problem, if we have any issues in our own life, we must share. Uh, and then uh, we must talk uh, to each other and not simply just uh, trying to hide it or trying to uh, keep it to ourselves. Uh, that is why the importance of having the family itself. And then um, that's why uh, for me, the father, mother and family relationship is actually uh, very important uh, throughout my life itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a blessing that you had that. You know what I mean? There are some who don't have that. 
Um, so, you know, again, they instill great values in you. Um, you were able to carry that on in your life and, and bless you for being, you know, having that relationship and that family with you along the way. Because um, there are some who don't have that. But is that it, the inspiration for what you do in your social service work? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, it seems uh, a lot because uh, in the social welfare department, uh, in, in, in my daily job, uh, once I was the principal of the boys' home, uh, the boys who involved in crime or in the uh, as the juvenile cases, uh, they involved in drugs and so on. Uh, it, it seems at very first time, uh, I seems to lost, and then I don't know how to tackle them, how to talk with them, and that is why I refer those kind of uh, things uh, mainly uh, to my late father a lot because uh, he's in the uh, policeman. And, and they deal a lot with those who are involved in crime. And from there, actually, I learned how to tackle uh, the issues itself and then how to be uh, with the boys, especially in the boys' home. And then in dealing with uh, the uh, domestic violent cases, uh, because in my own family, I haven't seen any, any kind of uh, those things happen. Uh, in in, in uh, during my my uh, late father and late my mother itself, uh, it seems that if they have a problem, uh, my father and my mother uh, seems to uh, will definitely having a nice talk uh, to each other. And uh, if if we know uh, they are in a problem, uh, when both of them seems to be very quiet, and that is why actually uh, during that particular time, uh, we know they are uh, they are having some issues. Uh, but uh, in, in, in the domestic violence cases, it seems that uh, mainly uh, the women are being beaten or abused by the husband. Normally, uh, the communication uh, breakdown is happening there. And uh, I don't know at first uh, how to tackle that, and how to talk to them. But uh, with the uh, guidance from friends and also from my own family, uh, I gradually uh, try to tackle and try to uh, ask them uh, and uh, discuss uh, the issues uh, of the domestic violence itself and then try to uh, manage them and, and, and try to talk to the children itself. And I think uh, it is very important actually for us, uh, for anyone uh, in having those kind of issues or problem uh, communication is very important. Uh, we need to talk to each other. We need to uh, communicate and we need to uh, express our feeling, not in terms of abusing. Mm -hmm. that Absolutely. That's exactly it. And, and let's talk about that because you did bring up the exact process and the exact, um, again, by saying, um, I don't quite know how to talk to them or I didn't know how to talk to them about that. I didn't know how to handle that issue. Mm -hmm. But you know what you did? You know, communication is key, right? Yes. I think these men have a message they want to get across, right? And for whatever reason, it's not coming across to their partner, their spouse, the person they're trying to communicate it to. And it comes across in anger, frustration, right? These negative attitudes that we're trying to avoid. Yes. I think if we can get these men to, to, to handle it in such a way that, look, I need to deliver this message. My wife, my partner needs to understand this. But I have to, I have to be calm. I have to be um, considerate of how I'm going to speak to her. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think if we kind of talk to men that way and make them understand, look, we, the communication, the way we communicate, that's key in delivering our message. And that could help in a step towards reducing domestic violence, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is why in, in, in Malaysia itself, uh, one of our step in, in, in order to help those who are, in, who, who are involved in the domestic violence, I have to agree with Siu Mei Go just now. She did comment that communication is the key word mm -hmm. here. Uh, yes, it is very important. And now, before this, earlier, uh, 10 years ago, when I'm dealing with the domestic violence, our main focus would be the wife who are being beaten by husband. But towards the end, if we only help the wife uh, and don't confront, don't, don't talk, don't 
uh, try to communicate with the husband, uh, we don't know what the real reason. Uh, because, uh, in, and that is why in, in, in the uh, Department of Social Welfare Department itself, uh, we did uh, have the interactive uh, bank hell uh, to those who are involved in the domestic violence uh, cases, especially uh, the men who abuse their wife. Uh, we have the uh, bank hell, uh, we have the interactive bank hell, uh, which uh, the men uh, will need to uh, discuss, will need to uh, be there and, and, and talk. Uh, because I still remember one of my cases uh, when I'm dealing uh, with the husband, uh, at first, uh, I thought that uh, the wife uh, is only uh, become uh, or being abused uh, mainly by the husband only. But towards the end, uh, some of the factors, uh, some of the contributor factors uh, leading uh, the wife uh, being beaten by, by the husband, it's actually uh, both of them uh, is actually uh, lack in terms of communication. Uh, the, when the husband needs something, especially uh, simple things actually, uh, like food or, or, or some uh, coffee and so on. Uh, but uh, the wife seems to don't really understand and don't really know the standard of that particular. And when talking about that, uh, actually when I was in the Department of uh, Women Development, uh, it is as the gender issue towards the end. Uh, because. Uh, the men need to understand the gender roles itself, uh, providing the food and the drinks uh, to the husband uh, by the wife is actually, that would be uh, the action of both party, uh, the husband and the wife. Uh, therefore, in our uh, approaching uh, towards this kind of uh, situation, as I being mentioned earlier, communication and uh, their understanding towards each other is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, and you talk about you know different different aspects and understanding, um, you know, the woman or the you know, I think compassion and being able to understand the other person um, is part of communication as well. So thank you for mentioning that as well. Yes. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, just share one or two other things that. Malaysian men um, are faced with now in, in maybe in our current climate because of COVID or just, you know, just things that men have to go through in general? Yes. Uh, I really like last night, uh, there's a discussion uh, between Mr. Alec, one of my colleagues in social welfare department itself, uh, the suicidal issues. Uh, yes, uh, it is actually become one of the pandemic as well in Malaysia because due to and most of the cases, uh, the success rate of uh, abuse, uh, the success rate of uh, suicide is actually by uh, men. Uh, this is actually due to uh, most of them uh, as the sole uh, income from the family and then suddenly uh, losing their job or uh, their salary getting uh, smaller or some of them uh, really stressed with the current situation, with the pandemic, uh, jobless and so on. Um, and therefore, uh, it become one of the uh, major issues uh, which need to be tackled. And therefore, in Malaysia itself, uh, in, in, in our department, we come up with the uh, community chat uh, program. Uh, 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 it is actually uh, tele-counseling uh, lines uh, that we provide. Uh, it is either uh, through online or through uh, tra telephone or chatting. Uh, when dealing uh, with this kind of situation, uh, we will uh, try to uh, support them uh, with all the information and so on uh, in order to help them. And other than that, actually, in terms of helping uh, those men who are in trouble or who lost their job, uh, it is actually very important to uh, help them uh, in order to try to uh, be or uh, uh, yeah, try to explore the new uh, set of uh, way to uh, try to uh, get some new job and so on, uh, especially online and so on, because uh, we need to, life goes on, uh, and then uh, we need to uh, discuss and then try uh, the new way 
uh, in uh, having uh, or try to help ourselves. And uh, therefore, in, in, in terms of uh, try to uh, helping uh, those uh, kind of situation, uh, we need to talk a lot. Uh, we need to discuss and we need uh, this kind of platform actually uh, so that uh, most men uh, will uh, do understand uh, and do uh, try to uh, help each other uh, because uh, the more we talk, the more we uh, try to uh, convey what our issues, what our problem, someone might definitely uh, will help us and then uh, will bring us uh, together. Uh, it is either based upon their experience or at the same time, uh, it is actually very important uh, for us uh, to know that uh, what really need uh, in their daily life. Uh, and then beside that, uh, today actually in the uh, paper, uh, it is either online or, 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 or by hand, uh, actually uh, there's one uh, cases in the remote uh, Malaysia itself, in remote Sarawak itself, uh, it seems to be a David of uh, case. Uh, it is actually one man in the remote area of Sarawak, uh, which is called Lundu, uh, is being uh, molested uh, for about uh, 48 and then 17 boys. Uh, and then this kind of issues actually happen uh, rampantly during this pandemic COVID-19 itself. Uh, because, uh, yes, as I told earlier, try to do the online uh, business. And then what happened to that particular, on this particular case, which I mentioned just now, is actually uh, he's uh, selling the phonographic uh, of boys uh, online uh, to throughout the world. Uh, and then uh, luckily it is uh, being uh, monitored uh, by the police department uh, in Australia and also in Malaysia. And then uh, that particular man uh, get uh, 48 years of uh, imprisonment and also wow. uh, with 15 strokes. Uh, uh, because uh, this kind of uh, uh, situation is actually uh, still uh, very um, rampant and then uh, it is very serious uh, offence in Malaysia uh, and that is why uh, he got uh, 15 strokes, uh, might as well uh, 48 years of imprisonment. Uh, and then uh, this kind of uh, case uh, happened and then and in the very remote area uh, which for me, it is kind of shock uh, because uh, normally when we receive uh, the case from the police, uh, those kind of uh, cases uh, mainly happen uh, in the urban area. And nowadays, uh, it seems that all the parents, all the men especially, the, and the boys need to be very careful with themselves. And for the parents, they need to really look after uh, their child by keep on asking keep on monitoring what happened to them. Because uh, for me, uh, myself, in, 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 in terms of dealing with the uh, child abuse cases, it seems that uh, even though uh, we, if we compare between girls and boys uh, issues, uh, normally boys would definitely uh, don't want to share, don't want to talk about what they are having uh, a problem. But uh, for boys, uh, for girls, they will definitely try to share and tears uh, it up with friends and so on, especially the counsellors. And with boys, actually, if, if this kind of situation happen, uh, we need uh, to try, not only to try, we need to tackle uh, those kind of trauma or traumatic experience uh, that uh, they've been through uh, by uh, approaching them and then, and then do uh, lots of more activities with them so that they can move on with their own life. I think that's it for a while. <laughs> yes, and you had a lot to say. Um, not only did you bring up a lot of the, the issues that are facing Malaysia men, boys, um, you brought up a lot of solutions for, for how to tackle those issues as well. Um, you know, I know, and I'm sure people know out there, that a lot of these men or the young boys who, and, and even young girls who get taken advantage of in, in the Eastern cultures, 
um, are often because um, the parents are trying to do what's right or what's suitable for their children. And of course, there are always people out there who are going to take advantage of such opportunities in many ways. And then, of course, the boys and girls get caught up in situations that they have no control over and just have to do what they're told in order to try and get through all this, right? So these circumstances do happen. I love that you say that, you know what, by being able to check up on our children and monitor what they're doing or how their life is going after the, you know, we've put them in this home or whatever it is, um, yeah. you know, knowing what's going on helps to, to alleviate these kind of situations, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So it's amazing the great work you're doing. Um, you're part of International Men's Day Malaysia. Tell us a little bit about that, if you could. All right. <clears throat> uh, when I was being uh, approached by Padma, uh, friends of uh, Sibam, uh, I was very excited to know about the International uh, Men's Day of Malaysia itself. And then uh, this kind of movement is actually very important uh, because when I was in the uh, women's uh, development uh, department uh, for six years uh, last time in, when I was in Johor, uh, we try to tackle the issues of women uh, by trying to uh, make sure uh, they involved in the women entrepreneurship uh, by helping them if they are having a problem with their spouse, with their, uh, with their uh, husband uh, in the domestic violence cases and so on. Uh, but towards the end, I found that uh, it is on not only uh, one uh, gender, one sex only that we need to tackle. Uh, what the most important thing is that we need to go to the men. Uh, what are their issues? Uh, what are uh, things uh, that need to be tackled together with them so that we will know how to help them? And that is why when I was in Johor itself, I was... Um, I was involved actively uh, in the uh, clowning. I do the clown part-time as a clown and then a drum circle. And at the same time, uh, I was uh, actively uh, with the laughter yoga uh, movement, uh, which is in Johor Bahru, Happy and Joyous Club. Uh, from there, actually, I know uh, it is actually, uh, regardless of sexes, uh, the kind of happiness, kind of uh, things in our life is very important. And uh, even uh, when we have a problem, when we have issues in our own life, uh, this kind of uh, movement, this kind of NGOs, and this kind of activities are actually very important for us uh, emotionally. And um, at the same time, uh, we can release our stress uh, from there. And that is why uh, when I was being approached uh, to the uh, International Men's Day itself, I found that I need to share this. I need to talk about uh, these kind of uh, things uh, that I have learned and I have experienced by myself uh, because uh, it is very important uh, for us rather than uh, keep on uh, pursuing our daily life, daily, daily chores uh, with our own job. At the same time, we need to socialize. We need to uh, do some kind of part-time activities and so on uh, to make ourselves uh, becoming, uh, having uh, to have uh, more friends and also at the same time, they are the one that we need. And uh, from this particular platform, I know you, RJ, uh, as well, and also uh, some of uh, other international friends, which uh, is very important for me uh, to uh, have, uh, know or to learn something uh, new. And at the same time, uh, I do uh, need uh, this kind of platform to share and also at the same time uh, to move forward uh, in terms of helping uh, those who are in needs. Because uh, from this particular discussion, actually, it's very important for uh, people out there to know uh, what really happening, especially for those men who are still uh, keeping all the problems, all the issues to themselves only. Uh, and then uh, that's why uh, it's very important uh, for us to keep on uh, having uh, a good relationship and a good uh, friendship with anybody around the world. 
Absolutely, absolutely. The friendships, the work we do, it's all amazing. Um, you've certainly put on some good work and some and some help for, for our men and boys out there. Um, so what can our men and boys do, our young boys especially, what can they do to help empower their own lives? All right. Uh, that's a very good uh, question. And then <clears throat> actually there's uh, lots of things uh, in this particular uh, world nowadays. If uh, last time, uh, when I was still young, uh, I used to play uh, with uh, our, our our bare hand uh, because we don't have any gadget, uh, we don't have any apps or anything, any 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 uh, games. But at the same time, uh, nowadays it seems they are stuck to uh, that kind of uh, situation. Uh, they need to go out and they need to do the uh, physical activities as well. Uh, and therefore, uh, in order to have a good brand, we actually need to involve actively in many things and many uh, platform and involve ourselves uh, with all those uh, kind of beneficiary activities are actually uh, as the platform for us to move forward. Uh, because uh, when we keep on uh, only uh, focusing on our study uh, itself only, but uh, in terms of communication skill, in terms of uh, how to uh, deal uh, with citizen issues, actually it is not from the book that uh, the best teacher that we must learn but we must uh, go to the uh, <clears throat> physical teachers and also uh, perhaps online like this uh, in the discussion and so on and i would like all our boys especially in malaysia itself uh, nowadays uh, it seems that almost two years they are only uh, going to the school uh, by online via online only uh, and therefore uh, we know uh, is kind of uh, boring, but at the same time, uh, they must uh, still uh, focus as well uh, with their life and also uh, try to know uh, more on the uh, issues, uh, more on the things uh, which happening in our society. Like I mentioned earlier, the case of uh, pedophile, uh, most of our boys seems to uh, doesn't know about that kind of uh, things, uh, what is grooming uh, what is uh, happening to them when being approached by someone uh, who will lead to the pedophile uh, situation itself. So uh, they need uh, to be educated. They need to be uh, <clears throat> learned uh, from uh, anyone, uh, from uh, YouTube and so on, uh, which nowadays uh, it seems that uh, we have lots of channel uh, in terms of explaining on on these particular things and most importantly uh, for boys out there especially in Malaysia uh, we uh, from the social welfare department itself and also some of the NGOs uh, in Malaysia itself actively trying uh, to be or on board with you guys uh, in terms of trying to have the uh, activities uh, trying to set up a good program and you if you guys have any suggestion or anything uh, in mind or anything uh, to, to, to to bring up uh, the issues and also uh, the ideas uh, in uh, solving the issues, uh, we are actually open uh, uh, to have a discussion or to receive any uh, email uh, from you guys or, or suggestion from time to time so that uh, we shall learn from each other uh, from time to time. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And that's what we're talking about here is open up, right? Everybody being willing to share and being yeah. available so that when people can share, we're open to receive them. Mm -hmm. And then I think you also said, don't forget to get out there and have some good times and have some fun. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Muhammad Ali type for joining us today, for sharing your life journey with us and sharing for all that wisdom. I appreciate your courage, willingness to help other men and share your life struggles with us. Yes. Thank you as well, RJ. Thank you. For having me today. Absolutely. Thank you. You've been a blessing. Thank you. Yes. Um, so a few announcements to share. As many Canadians know, our Indigenous communities are in a crisis right now and they need our help and support. Voice of Men 360 has been stepping up. We were running a donation drive for Indigenous families. If you have used clothing, dry good items, um, or any other th donation items to, to, to give, please, we're working collect them, reach out to us through our phone numbers, 416-356-7414.
or 437-889-8329. Um, you can email us, info at voiceofmen360.org, or reach out to us through Facebook and Messenger. Uh, we're working to coordinate to collect those items. So we have a few live shows going on here at Voice of Men 360. The first one you've just participated in is called Open Up, where we invite people to participate and share their life journey with you. That is a live talk show. Um, you've just participated in um, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern Time and Sundays, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We also have a live Tamil language talk show called Vili, which means I. That takes place Sundays at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a webinar we host the first Saturday of every month from 1030 Eastern Time, where we bring out organizations to share their expertise with you. Then we have a special show we call The Unspoken Tears. That takes place the second Saturday of every month. Um, that's 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, where the focus is domestic violence against men, bullying, male sexual abuse, traumas, and human trafficking. Yes, they do happen, and we're working to tackle them here. The next episode will be on Saturday, September 11, 10 a.m., where the topic is the life before and after human trafficking. Um, that's put on by Armand King. Um, so, And then we host a co-host a show with the All Bengal Men's Forum called the South Asian Men Show, where the topic is, yes, issues faced by South Asian men. Um, and then we turn all of our content into podcast episodes, so please look out for us on your favorite content, iPhone, Google Play, Spotify, and more. Um, we host some support groups. Our first one is a men's only support group, Men Supporting Men. That takes place um, every two weeks, Tuesdays, um, from 6 p.m. to 7 to 30 p.m. The, the next one will be Tuesday, September 7th, and the theme is Life After Divorce. Please come up and join us for that through Zoom. The link is available on our Facebook page and group. Then we have a... Um, indigenous peer-to-peer -peer support group. We call this one Pass the Talking Stick. Um, that's the fourth Friday of every month uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. again through Zoom. And then there are no limitations with gender, age, nationality, or ethnic groups. All walks of life are invited to participate in our program. You want to be a guest on any of our shows or willing to be a part of our organization and help us, whether directly or indirectly, please reach out to us. We're looking to work with individuals, professionals, organizations, experts, communities, um, NGOs, associations, governments, um, and more. Please reach out to us through our phone number, 437-889-8329. That number again is 437-889-8329. Or email us, info at voiceofmen360.org. Our website, www.voiceofmen360.org for more. And then please visit us on all of your social media platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, um, YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more of our videos and more of our programming. And then find us on all of your Facebook program, Facebook slash groups, facebook.com slash groups slash voiceofmen360. Um, we're running a special campaign, a membership drive. We want to more than double our membership. We're looking to reach 5,000 members by International Men's Day 2021. That date is November 19th, 21, 2021. And we want you to, you know, we want to increase our membership, increase the awareness, increase the work we're doing. Help us spread the word of the work we're doing here in Voice of Men 360 with Open Up and the valuable programmings that we have available. Um, 5,000 members plus is the number we're looking to reach by November 19th. So that's just over two months away, folks, and we're looking to more than double our numbers. So please help and support us in that. We want to reach more people. We want to help more people. We want to continue the good work we're doing. Please continue your support. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of it. And until next time, I'm RJ Horner, Vice President of Voice of Men 360 and host of Open Up, asking you to open up.